session. Again, I'd like to welcome you all to our advanced training for the day, which will be covering apps for Earth that you can utilize on your iPad. Let's go ahead and get started. The Wild Tech DC Senior iPad program, its owners and presenters offer technical assistance, virtual health, well-being information designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on the information that any applications or topics made by Wild Tech, including but not limited to mobile device applications and any social media pages maintained by Wild Tech its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or legal advice. Thank you so much for letting me read the disclaimer. If you cannot see me, hear me, or see the screen, please let me know in the chat, and I would appreciate that. And let's just make sure our TVs and cell phones are silenced to the best of our abilities to give others, but most importantly, ourselves, um, the most immersive experience. Thank you so much. Uh, to keep our meetings organized and have some kind of etiquette and allow everyone the opportunity to uh, speak. Um, I just ask if you ever have a question, comment, or concern, anything of that nature, to raise your hand in Zoom. You can do that by tapping more at the top right, again, those three dots, and then you can tap raise hand. So uh, can I have everyone in Zoom please raise their hand. You know, if you're having a great day, great Friday, if you're going to have a great weekend, you're here ready to learn, um, please raise your hand in Zoom. Again, either during or at the end of our sessions, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions or respond, respond to questions utilizing this feature. Okay, so we have about 20 folks on. Thank you all so much. We have about nine hands up. Who will be lucky number 10? <laughs> um, but again, don't forget to raise your hand. We can see the order of the hands that are raised. So it makes it really, really easy to be able to acknowledge everyone that raises their hand. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I saw Ms. Lorraine, thank you for being number 10. I appreciate that. <laughs> we have 11 so far now. But again, you know, we always love feedback, you know, at the end, of course, we have our overview and discussion. So any feedback on the session, but any answers to um, your questions, uh, please raise your hand in Zoom and I will be able to unmute you. And thank you so much. You all can lower your hands by hitting lower at the bottom. <laughs> so don't forget to lower your hand. Just like in real life, your, your arm will get pretty tired, right? <laughs> so uh, don't forget to lower your hand. Appreciate that. Um, and yes, uh, also, we also want to utilize the chat. If you want to communicate non-verbally, the chat is a great way to share a greeting or a hello. Happy Friday. Hope you have a great weekend. Um, again, happy Dandelion Day, <laughs> as you all could see on my background and such. Um, anything you'd like to share, uh, you can ask your question in the chat. Um, you know, any questions, any concerns, uh, resource information, quotes, any, anything. You do that by tapping more on Zoom. Okay, so I'm going back to Zoom myself. And then I tap on more. When you hit more, you'll see chat. On your end, it will be the first button. And at the bottom, it will say tap here to chat. You tap in that area and you send it. Type it in. So I'm just going to write hello. I wish there was a dandelion emoji. I try to find one. <laughs> um, there you go. Hello. Very simple. Again, it is dandelion day. So let me see if I can find something close. <laughs> um, right here, no, but I, I do love, um, you know, with these new updates, like this little coral one right here, that's a new emoji that just came out, um, which is pretty cool. So, um, so yes. Uh, don't forget to share, you know, your hellos or, you know, your good mornings, anything you like to share. You can even send a picture in the chat by hitting this uh, plus sign. And then by hitting photo, you can even add a photo in the Zoom chat if you would like. So I'm going to put in today's uh, Lunch Club flyer. <laughs> Be taking a trip to Brazil today at 12. Really looking forward to visiting South America with you all this month. Um, so yeah, you can uh, share just gifts or images in the chat as well. And it's a lot of fun just to be able to share um, different things um, with others. So 
Uh, love your emojis, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. Thank you. Happy Friday. Love it. <laughs> I know that's right, Miss Rosemary. I, lo I love your Zen colors. This is so cool. I'm going to save this. Oh, this is one. This is off of Anima Color. I've never heard of this app before. So uh, try looking up in the app store, y'all. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's good. Anima, I like, but I like my hot dogs nice and burnt with nothing on them. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, Ms. Rosemary. Um, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, fam. Everyone have a wonderful day. Lovely weekend. The bees are back. Oh, my goodness. I haven't seen any bees. <laughs> I hope I, you know, takes a minute. They, they're much needed, though. Bees are an essential part of our, uh, you know, biodiversity on Earth. So <laughs> um, make sure you all continue to utilize the chat not just during this session, but uh, any Zoom session that you attend. And I really appreciate you all participation. Again, I can see the chat while we, uh, while we have our presentation. So please share any comments or questions and it's much appreciated. Additionally, in the chat, I would love if you could share again, what was your favorite uh, session or sessions this week and why? I know we haven't had our um, lunch club yet today, uh, which is always a, you know, a big hit. So, um, but yeah, we, again, every week we host about 15 to 16 sessions, everything ranging from advanced trainings to lunch clubs, to our talk shows, to our guests this week, you know, especially Infinite Legacy was interesting. And Annie yesterday, learning more about the web browser, uh, our modules, our advanced session, our lunch clubs have all been pretty great, especially because we just started a new book on Wednesday. Um, but yes, please share which ones were your favorite and why, and I would really appreciate that. Today, we'll be talking about all about Earth, because again, it's Earth Month, and it will be Earth Day soon. <laughs> we'll be talking a little bit more about that. We'll be introducing and guiding through our apps, uh, which will be WWF Together, the World Wildlife Fund Together app. Um, Earth hero, and all the world. Last but not least, we'll be having our overview and discussion talking about how these apps can improve our daily lives. And of course, you can um, just say how you felt about the session and answer some of the questions that uh, will be on the screen. But other than that, I look forward to learning more about the year and let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> so all about Earth. Um, so it, I didn't get a chance to go over this uh, week's daily reminder in specifics, but if you all uh, look to the highlight at, towards the bottom, um, you know that April is Earth Month. And again, Earth Month is an annual event held every April to raise awareness about uh, environmental issues and um, promoting sustainability. It's a time for individuals, organizations, and communities to come together to advocate for the protection of our planet and to take action to reduce our ecological footprint. Earth Month often includes activities such as tree planting, beach cleanups, recycling initiatives, educational events, and campaigns to promote renewable energy and conservation efforts. It serves as a reminder of the importance of preserving our natural resources and working towards a more sustainable and environmentally friendly future. Um, this year's theme, because each Earth Month does have a theme, um, is Planet versus Plastics, which calls to advocate for widespread awareness on the health risks of plastics, rapidly phase out all single-use plastics, urgently push for the strong UN Treaty on Plastic Pollution, and demand an end to fast fashion. If you search up Earth Month 2024 theme, or even just go to earthday.org, um, you can learn more about this year's theme, which again, I think is quite important, um, especially uh, this year, um, to, to, to talk more about um, planets and our, and our use of plastics, okay? Um, this video that I found was just quite interesting. It shows the evolution of life on Earth, um, basically, in a minute or less, which is, I think, quite amazing. So I'll showcase this twice because um, it is quite a short video. There's a lot to unpack. But again, it's just really crazy to think about 
uh, 4.5 billion years of history in the scope of 24 hours. So I hope you all enjoy and let's see what goes on. Life. With an estimated 3.8 billion years of existence and evolution on Earth, it's an odd thing indeed. So how did we get here? And what would the Earth's 4.5 billion year timeline look like compressed into a normal day of 24 hours? The story begins early in the morning, around 4 a.m., with the rise of the first simple, single-celled organisms. However, these organisms are destined to spend quite some time alone. At 1 p.m., a simple cell engulfs another, creating a symbiotic relationship and the first eukaryotic cells, or cells with internal organs. At 6.30 p.m., these cells begin to form colonies, and thus the first multicellular life develops. But it isn't until 8.30 p.m. that sea plants appear, and 20 minutes later we suddenly see animal life erupt in an explosion of inventiveness. Jellyfish, the first true vertebrates, trilobites. Incredible diversification begins to take place, and just before 10 p.m., plants begin to appear on land, followed by land mammals. By 10.24, the Earth is covered in carboniferous forests, and the first winged insects appear. Many reptiles dominate the land with less than an hour left, but a mass extinction event allows dinosaurs to storm the scene and remain, until 11.41 p.m. when they too suddenly vanish. And so begins the age of mammals. In the last few minutes, apes split from the old world monkeys, and with only 1 minute and 17 seconds left before midnight, humans emerge. All of the recorded human history fits within a few seconds, an individual life lasting barely an instant all a culmination of 3.8 billion years of life. This ASAP science video was made possible by the... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that was quite interesting. Again, I'm going to play it one more time because, wow, again, just putting life, all of life in a single day, it's, it's a quite interesting perspective. <laughs> Life. With an estimated 3.8 billion years of existence and evolution on Earth, it's an odd thing indeed. So how did we get here? And what would the Earth's 4.5 billion year timeline look like compressed into a normal day of 24 hours? The story begins early in the morning, around 4 a.m., with the rise of the first simple, single-celled organisms. However, these organisms are destined to spend quite some time alone. At 1 p.m., a simple cell engulfs another, creating a symbiotic relationship and the first eukaryotic cells, or cells with internal organs. At 6.30 p.m., these cells begin to form colonies, and thus the first multicellular life develops. But it isn't until 8.30 p.m. that sea plants appear, and 20 minutes later we suddenly see animal life erupt in an explosion of inventiveness. Jellyfish, the first true vertebrates, trilobites. Incredible diversification begins to take place, and just before 10 p.m., plants begin to appear on land, followed by land mammals. By 10.24, the Earth is covered in carboniferous forests, and the first winged insects appear. Many reptiles dominate the land with less than an hour left, but a mass extinction event allows dinosaurs to storm the scene and remain, until 11.41 p.m. when they too suddenly vanish. And so begins the age of mammals. In the last few minutes, apes split from the old world monkeys, and with only 1 minute and 17 seconds left before midnight, humans emerge. All of the recorded human history fits within a few seconds, an individual life lasting barely an instant all a culmination of 3.8 billion years of life. This ASAP... Mm. It just, you know, puts things into perspective, you know? Uh, the last two minutes, you know, there's so much that had to occur before we were here today. You know, uh, if you think about when people talk about generations and like 10 generations above, you had all those people that, you know, were did what they needed to do to survive and we ended up here today so it's uh you know just quite an interesting thing to to think about and put things into perspective <laughs> there's a bigger picture i think that's what i got from the video so hope you all enjoy um next up is this video on um what is earth day uh this year earth day falls on april 22nd which is a monday um actually yep yeah, april 22nd it's a monday let me just make sure yep yeah. uh from two two weeks from this coming monday so we'll probably have something related to earth day on that day as well that i look forward to creating but yes what is earth day let's look let's see uh what to look forward to
Each year, people from around the world celebrate Earth Day. What is Earth Day? Oops, sorry about that. Each year, people from around the world celebrate Earth Day. What is Earth Day? When did this day begin? The origins of Earth Day can be traced to the 1960s. Several vocal activists were beginning to raise the public's awareness about the problems of pollution and other environmental issues. Rachel Carson's Silent Spring was amongst the most influential books related to the impending dilemmas that the planet was facing. In 1968, Morton Hilbert, along with the U.S. Public Health Service, hosted a Human Ecology Symposium. The focus of this symposium was the state of the environment and the effects on human health that the environment can have. This symposium helped lay the groundwork for what would eventually become the first Earth Day. Over the next two years, Hilbert, Wisconsin Senator Gaylord Nelson, environmental activist Dennis Hayes, and many others worked to organize the first Earth Day, which took place in April of 1970. A similar celebration had also been organized earlier that year. On March 21, 1970, activist John McConnell helped organize a day to honor the Earth and the concept of peace. This date was selected to coincide with the first day of spring. Eventually, these two separate Earth Days would be unified into one holiday. The name Earth Day had been suggested by many different people, and it seemed an obvious choice for the title of this new holiday, primarily because it rhymed with birthday. The date of April 22nd was chosen because it was recognized that college students would be amongst the most active participants. April 22nd would not fall during spring break, yet would be before final exams. This date would also prevent conflicts with the Easter and Passover holidays. Additionally, April 22nd was very close to the date of John Muir's birthday, April 21st. Muir was one of the most prominent conservationists of the late 1800s. More than 2,000 colleges and more than 10,000 public schools from across the nation participated in the first Earth Day. Some estimates claim that more than 20 million people took part in the festivities. More than a million people in New York City alone turned out for the demonstration. Originally, Earth Day was celebrated only once every 10 years. By 1990, Earth Day had grown to a worldwide event with more than 200 million people in 141 nations taking part. After the success of the 1990 Earth Day, it was decided that Earth Day should be observed as a yearly event. Throughout the decade, the celebration of Earth Day helped bring a focus to environmental concerns such as the importance of recycling, climate change, and clean energy. Traditions associated with the holiday include the ringing of bells, including the Japanese peace bell, which was donated to the United Nations by Japan. It has also become traditional to sing the Earth Anthem, written by Abai Kumar. This anthem has been translated into eight different languages, including English, Russian, French, Spanish, and Chinese. There are many other ways Earth Day can be celebrated. Groups might choose to participate in a cleanup of a neighborhood park, plant trees, or go without driving for a day. Yep, so that's how Earth Day came to be, a little bit of history and some ways that you can celebrate Earth Day or see how others have done so, which again, I thought was quite an interesting video. Um, last but not least, you know, I, I like to include a quote when I can um, from someone in our past so that we, we can learn in, in today. 
Um, this quote was written by Rachel Carson. She was actually just mentioned in the video. And I actually um, did a write-up on her. So I'll share that with you before we read our quote. And if you would like to respond to this quote, you can raise your hand um, in Zoom uh, once I read it. Um, Rachel Carson, she was a marine biologist and nature writer and prompted the global environmental movement with her 1962 book, Silent Spring, which outlined the dangers of chemical pesticides. The book led to a nationwide ban on DDT and other pesticides and sparked the movement that ultimately led to the creation of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. Four chapters in her book detailed pesticides' impact on humans, including cancer, and also accused the chemical industry of spreading misinformation. A uh, chemical company sought to discredit Carson as a communist or hysterical woman, but through her CBS Reports TV special in 1963 and support from then President John F. Kennedy, Carson made pesticides a major public issue. She received medals from several major institutions, was posthumously awarded the President Medal of Freedom in 1980, and her homes are considered national historical landmarks. So she's definitely made an impact on history. She was born in 1907 and she passed away in 1964. So she was, you know, working till the end or, you know, make, try to make change, which is very applaudable. So at one point she had said, um, we stand now where two roads diverge, but unlike the roads in Robert Frost's poem, <laughs> The road's not taken. Uh, they are not equally fair. The road we have long been traveling is deceptively easy. A smooth superhighway on which progress, you know, we progress with great speed, but at the end lies disaster. The other fork in the road, the one less traveled by, offers our last, our only chance to reach a destination that assures the preservation of Earth. It's a very poignant quote, just to think about, you know, uh, maybe even the past 50, 60 years, especially since we're passing about, you know, the trajectory of where we're going uh, so far. So um, any, any thoughts, um, any responses to this quote? on the screen, anything that stuck out to you or you'd like to share? I just, I just think it's it's really smart to compare the the poem that Robert Frost wrote to, you know, the, the two ways that, you know, we could we could go. So I really like that part. Um, thank you, Anne, for sharing. Uh, before that, uh, a good analogous quote of human development regarding the earth. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Mr. Harrow. Um, and what do you think of this quote? I think that it's showing us that there are ways that we can save the earth and the planet for future generations. If you read between the lines, you will understand what she's trying to say, that uh, we must protect that, uh, the world that we live in. So it'll be mm. here for a longer time. Mm, long, longer time. Because, you know, mm. we, we can we can do things now. You know, we may not be here when maybe it, at that time, but we want to, you know, make sure it, our, 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 you know, human life just lasts. So, you know, do, doing things now can really make an impact on the future. Not, not throwing plastic in the water and... Uh, tossing the wrappers around the uh, beer cans and the sodas and um, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They had an incident a couple of weeks ago where a child was swimming in uh, up somewhere in Maine and uh, in the, I guess, and I might, might have been the river or a lake or something. I can't remember exactly where it was, but I do know it was in Maine. And uh, one of those, it was a small child, and one of those things got around their um, throat, and they almost drowned. Mm. And <clears throat> thank God they were saved, but, you know, it, 
people are doing all kinds of stuff. And it's not only children, but it's uh, the, the fish and the uh, uh, sea animals. Yeah, <clears throat> other, 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 you know, creatures in nature. Yeah, yeah, that are getting caught up in that stuff. Yeah, so we, and, mm. and we can recycle more, and we can we can uh, treat the earth with a better uh, uh, attitude. Don't take it for granted. Oh yeah, just uh, you're and if all of us did a little bit more, it would make a big impact. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I I appreciate you sharing, Anne, and your and your thoughts. Well, really thank do. you for allowing me. I, I was waiting for somebody else, but because uh, I see <laughs> you always the first one. <laughs> but, well, it's okay. I appreciate always your comments and your participation, Anne. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. You have a good. Oh, you you too, Anne. I appreciate that. <clears throat> so, uh, thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed the videos and the information as well. And we're doing uh, great on time. <laughs> uh, we'll be covering three apps like stated before, uh, WWF Together, <clears throat> Earth Hero, and All the World. So of course, I'll introduce the app, <clears throat> um, show you how to search in the app store um, so that way you can download it, so that way you can utilize it um, you know, during and after the session today. <laughs> First up is WWF Together. Um, so the, again, the World Wildlife Fund Together app, where you can learn about amazing animals. <laughs> WWF Together brings you closer to amazing and endangered species than you ever could have imagined, letting you discover their lives and the work WWF does for them. Uh, in the app, there are in-depth, interactive stories of endangered animals, and there are multiple interactive elements. Uh, the world's most amazing animals in one app. So <laughs> um, if, this is actually a screenshot of the app, which I think is amazing. It just looks very homey and I, I really like that. So uh, this video actually, you know, goes over the app a bit, but of course we're gonna go ahead and go into it. Uh, before we actually watch the video, we're gonna go to the app store, which is again, where you're gonna download the app. <clears throat> And in the search bar, you're going to type in WWF together and hit search. Once you do, it's right here at the top right corner of the screen. And of course, when you tap on an app, you can, you know, learn more about it or see more information, reviews, etc. And you'll be able to get the app. You'll say get and download it and open it. Okay. So while you all um, download the app, Let's watch the video on the actual app and what you can do. So that is the WWF Together app. So let's go ahead and, and go in and explore it. So again, this is what you will see when you open the app on your iPad. At the bottom it says skip. So I can I can skip it if I want to. Um, Yeah, so that is how, you know, you simply, when you open the app, um, this is what you will see. I just turn off the music here at the bottom left, okay? On the left-hand side, you have a menu with different things you can do. The very bottom left is an I, like an information section. So um, 
For more than 50 years, the World Wildlife Fund has been dedicated to protecting the future of nature. Together was created to bring readers closer to the realities and opportunities the World Wildlife Fund has to make a real difference in the world. It is meant for reading, rereading, and most importantly, for sharing, building a future in which people live in harmony with nature together. <laughs> That's cool. That's why it's called Together. <laughs> um, on the, on the uh, left-hand side, um, the very first option, you see there are three buttons. You can choose any of these animals to learn more about. So there's quite a few. <laughs> um, uh, so we'll go into one. So this one says monarch butterflies. That one seems pretty interesting. So look, it goes to the monarch butterflies section. You can, of course, swipe through. You know, I'm just using my hand or finger to swipe through. But these are all of the different animals you can learn about, which I think is pretty neat. So you could either swipe and choose, or you can tap on the button and choose as well. So again, monarch butterflies. Let's enter perseverance. That's their <laughs> that's their theme. Jaguars ferocity. That's pretty cool. So you see in the middle it says enter. So let's enter and learn more about monarch butterflies. So look, it's kind of like a grid style. It's telling you to swipe up or swipe right when you want to go on to a different section. So look at this, adult monarchs survive four to five weeks, but each summer a super generation lives months, traveling from Southeast Canada to Central Mexico for winter. Mm. Their 2,800 mile migration is longer than that of any insect. The World Wildlife Fund works to preserve habitat vital to these marvels of nature. Wow, 2,800 miles. Can you believe it? Southeast Canada to Mexico. Mm. So look, I just swiped up. Shake up and down to advance the butterfly. Keep shaking until the destination is reached. <laughs> so look, this is actually a, a physical. I'm actually shaking my iPad and it's, and it's making the mile counter go up. <laughs> that's, that's really cool, right? Uh, each year, monarch butterflies leave their summer breeding grounds in Canada and the United States to return to hibernation colonies in the forests of central Mexico. Wow. Tap to advance. And there you go. Flat, it says flap your wings. <laughs> this is really fun. Wow. It's literally showing you the journey of one of, one of these creatures. That's amazing. The monarchs will fly up to 80 miles each day on the two-month journey to their winter habitat, where a less extreme climate gives them a better chance of survival. Keep going, keep going. 80 miles a day. Can you? I can't imagine. <laughs> Uh, traveling between 1,200 and 2,800 miles, the monarch butterfly of North America exhibits the most highly evolved migration pattern of any known species of butterfly or moth, and perhaps of any known insect. Wow. So yeah, that was just one square. Like I could swipe through and look, threats. What are some different th threats? Uh, habitat loss, uh, pesticides. Climate change, wow. Colder winters could prove lethal. Milkweed is a primary fruit source of monarchs, but pesticide use is driving a major decrease of in availability of the plant inside the butterfly's U.S. reproductive and feeding grounds. Wow. Just some pictures. Wow, look at, look at that. <laughs> That's a picture of the migration. That's amazing. And if I tap on it, millions of butterflies arrive every autumn in the forests of central Mexico where they stay up to five months. Wow. The bold colors of the monarch's upper wings are a visual warning to predators that it is poisonous. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. What I could do, I could even take a, you know, if I wanted to, I could take a screenshot of this picture. I love that. <laughs> That's really cool. 
Um, here's some information um, about uh, monarch butterflies. Uh, four inches wingspan, weight 2.02 ounces, habitat, forest and mountains. Near threatened. Mm. Well, yeah, that's one part of the WWF Together app where you can um, learn more about different animals in our earth. The second button here on the left, um, the, the basically you can get emails from the World Wildlife Fund and um, keep you up to date on latest wildlife news and conservation updates. So if you want to, you can simply type in your email and get um, updates from the World Wildlife Fund. Fund. And look at that. You can even create your own origami, which I think is really neat. It shows you full on origami instructions. So you can take a piece of paper and actually create that, um, <laughs> that animal, which I think is so neat. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, wow, that's really cool. You can even take a picture of it and uh, and create and share your own photo. So if you create one, you can take a picture of it and like add a scene and, and things of that nature. So I think that's really neat. Um, the third option is look, World Wildlife Fund and Apple News. So um, you can add their section into your Apple News app. So look, I hit add World Wildlife Fund and look at that their section in Apple News came up. So let me hit the plus button here. And now I'm, I favorited uh, or uh, made them a channel or a topic. So look, uh, new regulations help protect whales from entanglement in fishing gear in the Indian Ocean. That's pretty neat. Um, preserving the lifeline of Southeast Asia. Pretty cool. Just looking through all of the different articles from them as well. Um, so yes, that's that's pretty much the World Wildlife Fund app. You can watch videos and do a certain activities for different animals. So if I go to polar bears, for example, and you can go ahead and look through all these different things, you can learn more about these um, you know, animals and nature, all different options, right? Like, look at these pictures. <laughs> that's, that's just amazing to look at, right? You know, especially in the movie that we saw yesterday. Wow. Um, so I hope you all enjoy. Uh, if you would like to take advantage or if you want to download or if you have downloaded this app, please raise your hand in Zoom. <laughs> And if you have downloaded or you want to download it or are downloading it, please raise your hand and zoom just so you can see if you're interested and if you like the app, okay? Um, so we have two hands up. Let's keep uh, the hands coming because I, I hope a lot of us want to take advantage of this app. It's really cool just to get some great information, some great images. And look, you can learn literally if you want a hobby, you can do origami. If you like that, or um, you can uh, get the news from World Wildlife, the World Wildlife Fund, that's a tongue twister, <laughs> on the Apple News app. You can get emails from them to learn more about their mission. But I think it's a great, easy, compact app to utilize. So um, thank you. We have, I, I see five hands up. It's, it's good to see. Hopefully the other 20, about 20 of us on also would like to take advantage of this app as well. Our next app that we'll be covering is called Earth Hero. So um, our future to choose. Earth Hero makes acting on climate change easy and helps you take more positive, practical action in response to the climate emergency while discovering more satisfying ways to live. Um, so kind of in a way is, uh, um, it kind of, Puts, uh, you can create kind of a plan for yourself and how you want to um, help the earth in doing some small tasks or, you know, you know, recommendations, okay? Uh, you can choose from personalized actions. You can discover ideas for healthy and smart ways to live. So I think it's just a, a great resource on helping make, uh, uh, helping you take positive, 
practical action. <laughs> um, when you uh, open the app up on your end, this is what your login screen will look like. So you will want to um, create an account, um, things of that nature. So that way um, you can then get started. But before you do, you got to download the app first, right? So you're going to go to the app store. And just like before, you hit the search button at the bottom right, and you type in the name or type of app oops, that you would like to download. So this is one is called Earth Hero. Right here at the top right, Earth Hero Climate Change. And again, you can always learn more about um, uh, the app itself just by swiping through the different information. But uh, we're going to go ahead and open it like we did before. And look at that. Our feature to choose, respond with positive, practical actions, shift the culture, advocate for change by discovering satisfying ways to live, and restore a healthy earth and caring for our shared planet. Yeah, so you can either create an account or sign in. <laughs> um, I did create an account last year, so um, it's pretty simple. If I hit create account, there are many different ways to do so. So um, let's see, uh, I will skip it for now. Uh, your profile may not be saved and you will not be able to use all features. That's okay. So um, it's just good. Sometimes you'll get a little prompt that comes up. So you just choose which one you want. But um, you know, I'll create an account, sign in with Apple. I'm gonna utilize my Apple ID. And sometimes that happens too, it, it, <laughs> it closed out of the app. So that's okay. Sometimes you just have to go back in and then hopefully again, this will work. Sign in. So there you go. Um, sometimes uh, with the app, you gotta, it, it kicks you out and you gotta come back in. Um, so look, uh, hello hero. Um, at, after this point, um, there are questions that it asks you, um, like what, what you done, such and such. Um, but essentially, when you are in the app, um, you have your home button. So at the bottom, you have these different actions after you complete that short quiz. Um, you, or you can view next steps, summaries, quotes, uh, global statistics, etc. There's an actions button, so you can explore different steps you take to make an impact on climate change. Um, emissions, you can view your emissions relative to the United States and globally. And there's a community button where you can see others and create change um, in your community. So, so some of these um, buttons will be based on the answers that you provide in a short quiz. Again, when you create your account, it says answer a few questions to start. Your answers will create an initial rough estimate of your carbon pollution. Um, this is not about being perfect. This is about helping you decide how you want to act. So um, when you do, again, this is what your app will look like. So this is your home page. Uh, there are over 125 uh, persons or accounts from 153 countries in this app. Um, there are over 720,000 actions achieved and there have been a lot of emissions saved, of course. Uh, so this is the home section. There are other links, other information that you can utilize. The second button, again, is the actions. So you can view all of the different actions, um, and, and, and it's easy to start small to make a big impact. So here's just some recommendations, right? Um, join a climate action group, uh, vacation closer to home. <laughs> so if I tap on this one, they give you tips, which I think is really neat. Uh, you can easily cancel or reset an action after you add it to your goals. So I'll, I'll add this to my goals. Look, and when I hit that, reminders work better with notifications. Get notified when it's time to update your progress. Yeah, I'll get a, get a notification. So look at that, great, goal added. Um, your goal, vacation closer to home. So again, if I tap on it, you see some different tips. Based on types of fuel, carbon pollution range from high to low as follows. So they're saying cruise ships are incredibly polluting. Uh, international flying, then domestic flying, then domestic single person driving, unless it's an electric vehicle, carpooling, 
taking the train, staying local. So just by these, by that tip, staying local really in a way, you know, does help out the planet versus some other things that um, you may do. I uh, asked friends and family for top holiday recommendations nearby. You know, DC is, is, it's really small, but there's just so much to take advantage of in DC. So um, every time a friend says, have you been here? I, I'd probably say no, because there's just so many things to do in DC. Uh, talk to your family about why you're choosing to stay more local so they can feel good about it too. Um, I'm, I'm that, I don't travel too often outside of DC. And, you know, that's not, you know, because I don't want to travel, but, you know, I like staying local. So I feel good about staying local most of the time because it helps out the environment. Uh, check, explore the quirky or overlooked gems in your own area. Uh, check out Atlas Obscura online. What is that? That's a hyperlink that we a little bit talked about yesterday, but uh, discover, wow, this, this website's cool. Discover hidden wonders in 218 countries and over 2,700 cities. Let's do North America, uh, United States. Let me see what comes up for you. Wow, unusual attractions. That's pretty cool. Uh, the Echo Park time travel market <laughs> in Los Angeles, uh, the Evolution Store in New York, Secret Tiled Staircase. This is in San Francisco. Let me see this. This that that looks really cool. Look at this staircase, you all. <laughs> that's amazing. That's so beautiful. Like especially this this picture right here. I think that's great. And look at that, I would have never known about this staircase if I didn't get into this app. So I think that's neat. Uh, I'll take a screenshot of this picture just because I, 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 I love it. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's really neat. And again, you never know where an app can take you, right? Uh, you have your notes right here, um, et cetera. But let's look at some other actions. Uh, thank climate change trailblazers. Take a break from bad news. <laughs> Listen to a climate podcast. That one's pretty easy to do, right? Because we have access to the podcast app. So I'll add this to my goals. And if I go back here again, some tips and tricks. There is an extensive range of climate and environmental podcasts. Uh, and there is uh, even a, a huge list. This is the best of the best. So if I tap on it, okay, it takes me to a website. And this is on um, Spotify, but look, I can hit this play button. Welcome to How to Save a Planet. I'm and actually play it, which is super neat. All these different climate podcasts, um, living on earth. Where does this one take? Okay, this takes me to npr.org. And look, it says Apple Podcasts. So if I hit Apple Podcasts, look at that. It takes me to the Apple Podcast app to that channel with all of those different episodes. So, wow. Six days ago, March 22nd, um, methane tracking from space, a Mars testing ground, solar eclipse, magic, and more. Hey, that's pretty interesting. So... Again, just by utilizing uh, the Earth Hero app, you can create actions and actually just view tips on those actions and different things that you can do, which I think is really, really cool. Um, emissions, uh, based on the, on the answers you provided, um, it tells about the relative um, emissions and you can always refine the uh, estimate um, based on these different categories. Again, it's just really neat to look through. And then last but not least for this app is the community app. So you can look at different organizations or um, things of that nature, which I think is really neat. Uh, see all different climate groups, um, climate mobilization, scientists, rebellion, elders, climate action. Let me see what that one's about. 
Uh, elders Climate Action mobilizes elders throughout the country to address climate change while there is still time to protect the well-being of future generations. Wow, let's go to their website and see what they're about. Eldersclimateaction.org. That's pretty neat. Um, joining our voices with all generations. Wow. Take action. Hmm. Just lots of cool information. Just learning more about the different organizations that are, are there to help out um, uh, save our planet. So I, I love it. That's really cool. So that is the Earth Hero app where you can look at, you know, some actions that, that you know, that you can utilize and do um, on your own. And at the top, it says my action. So if you want to complete one, like listen to a climate podcast. So look, you can mark that as achieved. And look, it says great job growing the movement. So that, you know, just by listening to that podcast, you know more information and it, it helps out the planet. So any little thing can do that as well. Okay. So that is the Earth Hero app. Um, if you are interested in using it or if you've downloaded it or if you, um, again, just are uh, interested in utilizing the app, please raise your hand in Zoom. And that is the Earth Hero app, where you can literally create a list of actions that you can take to help out our planet. So if you would like to take advantage of this app, or you like the app, or you have taken advantage of the app, please raise your hand in Zoom. <laughs> really appreciate that. So if we have two hands, keep the hands coming. <laughs> um, our last app for the day and I think, you know, one that I think is really engaging and fun for all ages um, is All the World. Explore and learn. All the World is a safe and free live action show featuring inspiring and fun videos that further so socio-emotional growth, um, explain how the world works, and challenges us to explore. Um, there are a full library of episodes, a variety of experiments and craft projects, and it's easy, very easy to navigate, and there is no advertising on this app because if I go to the app store okay um and hit the search I type all the world explore and learn and um you know at the end of the day this is an app intended for you know kids specifically 5 10 but anyone can enjoy um these videos but also you know if you know you know, anyone with kids, grandkids, this is a great, great, you know, um, option to, you know, so kids can learn more about our environment because they are, you know, our future. So um, utilizing this app can definitely make a, make an impact. <laughs> so uh, with all the world, um, when you open it, this is what your home screen will look like, where um, it's very, very simple, where you have kind of this play option, um, and you have this menu option right here where you can look at any of the videos that are there, change the language, et cetera. So basically let's go in here and let's see what our last app for today has to offer. But this is All the World and it's completely free, safe educational show tailored to kids available in five languages and it's ad free. Uh, cultivated with educators, it's uniquely creative and real socio-emotional learning access to video libraries. So lots of great features. If I hit this top right icon, again, like before, you can choose the video's language, you can search for topics that you want to learn more about, or you can just simply go straight to the videos. So um, there, as you can see, there are many, many videos out there. Some uh, like more tips, some more information um, based, uh, which I think is really neat. Um, look at this one. This one says recycling electronics. Let's go ahead and watch this video and see what it has to say. These are electronics, but you know, sometimes they break or maybe they're old and you don't want them anymore. But what do you do with things like a computer, for example, when you want to get rid of them? Throw them in the trash? Uh-uh, that's not a good idea, since they're actually full of chemicals that will poison the soil if they end up in landfills. So today, we're going to learn about a better option, 
which is to recycle your electronics. This is Brian. He started a fantastic service that takes all your used and unwanted electronics and recycles them. You can either come and drop them off yourself or the people who work here. They go out with their trucks and collect larger amounts of electronics at facilities such as schools and hospitals, for example. They load everything into their trucks and then start their journey back to the recycling facility. Every electronic device that comes in here wants to first of all get reused. But not all items can be repaired. So if they can't, they get recycled. Today we're going to follow the journey of a computer. We're going to see all the different steps that it goes through and all the different people that the computer gets to meet along the way. And Dwayne is the first person to meet the computer. Everything that comes in here gets weighed, so they keep track of all the electronics that come in and out of the facility. Then the computer continues its journey to Caesar. Caesar is a data technician, and that means that he opens up the computer to take out the parts that are inside, including the hard drive. Once he has removed the hard drive, he connects it to this machine. Step one is to erase all the data. Then step two is to test it to see if it works or not. If it still works, it gets put on this shelf so it can be reused. But if it doesn't, Mm, do you look at all look at all of the ones that were perfectly fine like just you know no faults it still works that's you know imagine if all of that was in the landfill that's it's really cool that I'm that I, I that this video is here and just seeing how the process of taking um, um, computers apart and properly disposing and recycling them it needs to be recycled this hard drive shows some errors, so Caesar brings it out to the hard drive shredder, which is a machine that shreds the hard drive into tiny pieces. As always when you use machines, it's really important with safety, so Caesar puts on gloves on his hands and some glasses to protect his eyes. The hard drive gets scanned into the system and then Caesar turns on the shredding machine. Here we go. It's time for the shredding. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. The hard drive gets completely destroyed. Let's see what it looks like. Whoa, so many shredded hard drives in here. They are made mostly out of aluminum and copper. So all of these shredded pieces get sent to another facility where they melt them down and use it for new products. Okay, let's see where the computer went. Someone picked it up to go to another station. This is Jennifer. She is in charge of testing the computer. Let's see if this computer starts up. It doesn't. Hmm, let's see if Jennifer can fix it. She starts by putting the RAM memory back into the computer that Caesar removed earlier. The RAM memory is a type of computer memory that temporarily stores data. Then she cleans the computer with this little vacuum cleaner to clean out all the dust. And lastly, puts back the hard drive. All right, let's see if it works. Yay, it turns on. Next step is to test a variety of softwares to see how well the computer functions. And Jennifer does that with this CD. The last thing she needs to do is to put all that information that she just tested into the system. And then she's done. Jennifer was able to repair this computer. 
which is fantastic because that means that it can be reused. What Brian and his team does with all the items that they can fix is to bring them to their little retail shop where people can come and buy used things that have been repaired here. Isn't that fantastic? They have all kinds of things in their shop. Speakers, music players, keyboards, and old cassette players. Have you ever seen one of these? They play music from cassette tapes. Pretty cool, huh? But so what do they do with all the electronics that need to be recycled? This is a desktop computer. And Charisma and Robert, they are D manufacturing technicians. They are actually trainees here, and this is their first ever job. <laughs> they take apart all pieces from the desktop so they can be separated and then recycled. They use tools like screwdrivers and cutters to cut off these cables, for example. Then take out other parts such as the circuit board, the processor, and the RAM memory. All different parts of the desktop. And then they put them in different boxes so they can be sent to different places where they melt the materials down and reuse it for new products. That is so great. In these bins they put even more materials. In here we have mixed heat sink parts. And in here we have aluminum, this is copper, and here are some more heat sink mix. So why is it important to recycle e-waste? Well, recycling your e-waste is important because it's actually only 2% of our landfill waste, but 70% of toxic waste. Meaning that there's a lot of chemicals in electronics that get released out into the soil. So next time something breaks, or maybe you don't want or need it anymore, bring it to an e-waste recycling place just like Brian's. They will take care of it and make sure that the electronics don't harm the environment. Wow. That was a pretty neat video, right? <laughs> um, I just was trying to find a topic that I thought would be interesting and just showcase the kind of videos that they have. And we just saw how to dismantle a computer and kind of see how to test it and what happens to it afterwards. So as you can see, there are many, 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 many videos uh, that are here that you can, um, you know, utilize and, you know, you, with, with kids, with grandkids, by yourselves. I mean, there's, look at all these episodes. There's so much to learn and they make it really fun and interesting. So um, not just on the environment, like this one says making a friend, right? Um, you know, um, making a shirt. Spot the difference. So it's a, it's a, I think it's a great, it's all free, no ads app that is very, very educational. So, um, so yeah, it's, Thank you all so much for uh, you know going over these apps. I hope you like that app. If you if you if you uh, would like to download the app and utilize it uh, for yourself or for others, um, please give me a thumbs up in in Zoom. You can do a thumbs up by hitting more and sending a reaction. <laughs> but I hope you all enjoyed those apps. And before we end for today, of course, we have our overview and discussion where you can ask me any questions or if you want me to go over anything, but I also have these four questions for you all to answer as well. But thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we have our trip to Brazil at 12 o'clock and our module at 1.30 we'll be talking about email. So I hope you get to check those out as well. Uh, what is one new fact that you learned today? Um, what app or apps are you interested in trying out and why? So I got a couple of hands out for each of the apps. So. Um, definitely want to know why you like that app per se, maybe your favorite feature. Uh, how can these apps improve your daily life and others around you? And in uh, what ways will you celebrate Earth this month? Um, so again, if you'd like to answer one of these questions or just share your thoughts on today's session, um, we appreciate uh, to hear from you all. So um, thank you. I know we have... Uh, 
I really appreciate your participation, Anne. I'm going I'm to come to you. And, um, let's just see if we can hear some from others first as well. Um, thank you, Gracie, for raising your hand. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Um, number one, what is one new fact that you learned today? Mm -hmm. I've always, you know, I know they have the recycling trucks and stuff that come around. But for them to actually take me step by step to see how they dismantle them, how they can refurbish them or whatever words you want to use, put them back mm -hmm. into circulation. If they can't use them again, how they destroy it and how they use the different parts mm -hmm. rather than just throwing them and put them on, putting them underground. That was that was good for me to see that. Yeah, um, especially that recommendation talking about e-waste recycling centers. Mm -hmm. I know, I just, I, Mr. Harold put a suggestion in the chat. I'm sure there are others, and I think it would just take a simple Google search, um, e-waste centers in D.C. Um, yeah. So, uh, so it's, yeah, I'm glad you loved that video. I, I saw mm -hmm. it, you know, just looking through, I know last year we saw the video on recycling and using, you know, things and such. But when I saw mm -hmm. that they released that video, I thought it would be quite interesting, and it was. So. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting mm -hmm. to see what they do and how they, you know, can take it apart and reuse parts and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gracie. You're I'm welcome. glad you enjoyed today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, thank you so much, Gracie. Um, Mr. George, hello. Um, uh, would you like to answer one of these questions or just share your thoughts? Um, you got to hit unmute, Mr. George, in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I was just trying to make sure I had the right number to call to, uh, to try to see if anyone could set up this regular iPad I got so uh, I um Mr. George uh I'm I'm kind of confused are you answering one of these questions or or no do you need I just assist? need that telephone number to um oh oh if you're talking about our help desk want, I, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll yeah um I'll send Can it you to you to the chat me? okay I, okay I just, thank you no problem Mr. George I hope you enjoyed today's session I did mm-hmm um, Anne, thank you so much for participating. Uh, which which one of these would you like to answer? Well, I just I enjoyed like Gracie the the showing how they take the computers and uh, and I'm sure they have one on televisions and uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. I also um, saw something that related to um, one of the apps you had on this morning. Uh, I've already signed up for the WWF and I was following you along and I, I'm going to put a couple more on. Um, but mm -hmm. I, they had a thing on the Today Show about the bees. If you remember a couple of years ago, bees were, were not plentiful. Yeah, they, were they, they still aren't. <laughs> well, they, they're, they're... In a they're, way, in a way. It could always be better, but I see they're trying to make improvements on that. Well, they have made a big comeback, and they've got uh, um, um, a million new bees and different types of them. So I thought that was interesting. Mm. And and I'm also interested in, in saving the planet, well, uh, recycling more and doing more of those things. And I'm going to look at a couple of those podcasts. So. Oh, this that's, was, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, this was very interesting. And thank you. Um, no problem, man. I, I really appreciate your comments. And yes, especially Earth Hero, where you can have a list of actions and kind of complete it. It gives you a sense of accountability in helping our planet, which we all should have because we, this is where we live. We might as well make where we live prosper and not the other way around. So, you know, I, 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 I like the, the, the sense that each of these apps give you. They give you a reason to want to keep the Earth, you know, as, you know, as it, as it can be, right? Right, and and I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, try that origami. That's uh, please do. Yeah, yeah that yeah. is fascinating. I'm a, I'm gonna try that. 
Uh, there's an episode on all the world on pollination. I think you would enjoy that one, Anne. So it's on here as well. So oh, okay. check it out. <laughs> okay. All righty. I want to see so butterflies much, back in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I know you will if you put okay. your mind to it, okay? Right. And I sent um, you a text so you can read it at your leisure. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll be sure to check it out. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any other thoughts or questions or comments on today's session? Um, I know we're over a little bit, but I appreciate you all coming. I just wanted to make sure to show you all literally the, uh, the, what, how unique these apps can be. I think these are some of the most unique apps I've found, um, especially with learning about the animals and the interactions with the taking actionable steps and looking at podcasts or just discovering new information about our earth through those actions and watching videos with your family, with yourself, with, with others on learning more about our planet and some of the things that we may be wondering about, I think is a um, great option. But uh, again, we have our lunch club at 12 o'clock taking a trip to Brazil in our module 130. I really appreciate you all coming on to this session and our movie yesterday. I will be talking about more about the earth because it is earth month. So just make sure you check out our next week's advanced sessions um, and our other, uh, other uh, classes as well. Thank you so much. I'll see you at 12 and I hope you all have a great rest of your morning. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. No problem. Have a good day, everyone. See you all soon. Later. You can, Thank right. you, Alice. Have a great day, after one. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all of your chats, everyone. I I, I read through all of them. I appreciate all right, that. Have a good day. Have a good day.